The internet seems to think that Asian Americans should just be able to take a joke. Let's talk about it. Oh, man, this keeps going viral. There's even dissent about this topic within the Asian community. Of course, the non-Asian community is also split as well. Let's read the title. Shane Gillis controversy. Asian American leaders demand Netflix Bud Light cut ties with the comic. Of course, we are talking about the M-A, uh, M-A-N-A-A. This is a smaller group, but it is. Uh, they have a quote. If you duck a few years, slowly build your career back up, and continue as if nothing has happened, you can come back even stronger than ever, says Guy Aoki, founding president of the Media Action Network for Asian Americans. And of course, people are debating about this. Yeah, we're going to talk about it, guys. There are some things that you need to remember about racism against Asians. Now, whether you categorize jokes as racism, whether they can be racist or not, that's kind of a different debate, but basically... We're going to go through it and we'll talk about what the internet tends to think because we got some insight for it. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications real quick. Let's just run the infamous clip. Damn, Chinatown's fucking nuts. It's crazy, dude. It is fucking China, dude. It's yeah. fucking Chinese down there. I wonder how that started. They just built one fucked up looking building and people were like, well, all right, no one said anything. Let's the chinks live there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, they built these fucking, like, huge Shanghai houses. The first one must yeah. have infuriated everyone. They were like, been, I'm pissed what now. the f***? I'm like, what are you guys doing here? Get these ducks out of that window. I, You know what? Yeah, true. Also, I'm always like, how can there be so many f***ing restaurants down here? All restaurants. Well, because... You go in, there's, like, one person eating ever. That white idiots like me are down there true. sucking down neuters. I hate China. I hate the food at Chinatown. It sucks. I like Chinese food. Boom! If you guys know about Shane Gillis's arc, I'm not saying he's not incredibly talented. Do I think he's like also a pro Asian comedian? No. But long story short, Andrew, the internet is like going back and forth because Shane Gillis is probably one of the most favorite comedians on the internet, especially for white guys. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I think he has a really big fan base, and I'm sure because we are talking about Shane Gillis in this video and we got him in the thumbnail, I'm sure a lot of fans of his are going to come. First of all, I've seen his special. I do think he's funny. I've even watched the episode of the show. But just because I've seen it, it doesn't mean that I don't think he should have apologized actually more explicitly. But anyways, guys, we're going to get into it. So here are five reasons why racism or these jokes against Asians are not treated the same as other groups. And by the way, here's a few clips of Shane Gillis discussing the thing that happened on Bobby Lee's podcast. Oh my God, I was a zombie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long. yeah. My God, I can't imagine that. It and makes it, you nicer though. It does? When you get fucking canceled like that, yeah, yeah. you're like very nice to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> everybody yeah. I met was like, hey, it's really, like, I'm so excited <laughs> to meet you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I would have got SNL, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I know. Don't fucking Wait, talk to me. Wait, uh, George, do you remember how we reacted to it at that time? Did we pile on or did we offer grace? Because we I want to be genuine about it. I don't want to be like, Shane, we're fine with it. But like, maybe we, did we say some shit we about were, it? Well, I, I, know I remember that he, what it was. What I, know was that it? He, I know that he looked up something that I said on H3. Yeah. yeah. And what did I say? You basically were just saying what you had just said now about it. it's a comic. You didn't know what you found offensive about it. You could understand why people would be upset, yeah. but you were saying yeah. it's a podcast. You perform on podcasts. Yeah, I, I just, you know, I just find it to be sacred, you know, yeah, comedy to be sacred. I just feel like, you mean, once we start on um, canceling jokes and yeah. bits, it's the end of our civilization yeah. as we know it, you know, and I just... You know, and also what he said was, <clears throat> I mean, Tony Hinchcliffe literally <laughs> said, you know what I mean? One more time for the chink. Like, like <laughs> in a mic, throughout a room. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, shit, dude. Is that when your <laughs> depression was like, lifted? No, I knew, no I, knew, yeah. I knew that was just going to bring more pressure to me. Uh, when it was like, oh, yeah. yeah, when his thing happened again. Everyone was like, it took Shane Gillis and Tony Hinchcliffe. Oh, oh God, God really? damn it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, point number one, Andrew. We Asians are not viewed as an oppressed minority, so white people don't necessarily see the handle with care sticker on our package. So basically, you would say that, you know, other minorities, namely what, black and Latino, they may have more of that, like, stamp on the package. You know how when you ship something through UPS or USPS, it says handle with care, fragile inside? Mm -hmm. How come it seems like the box that contains the word Asian definitely does not have that stamp on it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've talked about this in the past, but if Shane had said the N-word instead of the C-word, I understand that the historical context of those two words are different, 
But at the end of the day, they're both basically the worst slurs. And so if he were to have said the N-word, I don't think he would have rebounded like this. But because it's the C-word, it's somehow forgivable. It's it's a lot more forgivable in this culture, you know? Yeah, I, While I would say, to be honest, Chinese specifically as a group, which that C-word is referring to, ha is one of the other few groups in America, Native Americans, Black Americans, and Chinese, and Japanese, were both, there was laws against us. Right. You know what I mean? There was actually laws in the Constitution against Asians. Right, so... My whole thing is like, if he would have did the old podcast joke and just made fun of how dirty Chinatown was, or even if the waiters have broken English or whatever, you know, you could feel any way about it, but it would totally be okay. But I just think when you step into the slurs category, how come Asians are the one minority that's where it's pretty much acceptable to say that? Yeah, the slurs jokes are a little bit different because they're ideas, but the slur is kind of something you probably should stay away yeah, from. Yeah, I'm just asking the question why it seems like Asians are put in a different category. Um, and, you know, I always remember, and I have some respect for these guys, you know, whether it was Joe Rogan or Andrew Schultz, and they immediately came out even in 2019 and defended Shane Gillis. That made me lose some respect for them because I was like, these guys are supposed to be such deep thinkers and thinking in the box, outside of the box. And I was like, oh, but when it comes to Asians, basically, like, oh, we're supposed to just suck it up. Like, we're the one group where they just had a super white bro opinion, but I didn't hear any black comedians defend Shane Gillis. Right, I guess, like, a lot of other comedians who are cultured comedians didn't really take a nuanced stance on it. They weren't like, well, they were just kind of like, nah, it's comedy, what are you talking about? It's comedy, like, he made a bad joke, but it was a comedy, blah, 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 you know, and just basically just simply said, hey, well, it's comedy, swept it under the comedy category. Right, right, right. Point number two, not all Asians went through hardcore racism before in their life. The Asian American experience is hyper variable, and even two siblings sometimes can grow up living different lives and perceiving racism against Asians differently, leading to them having different thresholds. Mm -hmm. And when you have different thresholds, it makes it really hard to agree on anything as a community. Yeah, well, I mean, certain Asians experience racism well throughout their entire life, you know, in the circles that they were from people who look like Shane Gillis and people who don't look like Shane Gillis. Uh, but then there is also quite a few Asians that you would talk to that'd be like, oh, well, I don't know. I didn't really experience it. You know, I, I felt pretty accepted and blah, 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 you know. So then they're just going to be like, ah, uh, you know, I think it was just a joke he made. Right, right, right. So, obviously, let's say, for example, the leader of the M-A-N-A-A, -A -A, uh, Aoki, he maybe went through a lot of racism in his life from people who visually perhaps even look sort of like Shane Gillis. That might be his lived life experience, so that means that he's got a huge, like, fuel pool, uh, pool to get ignited, and then, obviously, maybe Shane getting so much success is igniting it. Now, I'm not fully agreeing that I don't feel about the way about Shane Gillis that Aoki does, but I'm just explaining that he's probably lived a different life. He's probably been through some things. Um, di point number three, different Asians have different thresholds for respect or the way that they view themselves. Mm -hmm. So in sociology, Andrew, there's actually this theory called habitus. A habitus is actually like, it's almost like the lens that you view life and the lens that you want other people to view you through. Mm -hmm. And how come it seems like there's some people who are like, oh, I'm in the group, so I'm accepted in American society, so a bunch of friendly ribbing is what I have to take. But then there's other people that view like I'm on the out group, I'm not a part of uh, mainstream society, I'm marginalized, so it's not okay for the people on the in group to dump on me. Right, and I mean, this, guys, this is different than two comedians roasting each other and then one person making racial jokes or both people making racial jokes. This is actually, in a roast battle, I think Asian jokes are actually somewhat fair if both people are going to get racial. But uh, this wasn't a roast because Shane doesn't have any Asian friends. As he said on the Bobby Lee podcast, I mean, he said that jokingly, but I'm pretty sure he's kind of telling the truth that he doesn't actually have a lot of Asian friends. So it's not that he was ribbing at a group that he's actually close to. He was just saying it to a group that he actually 
is not close to. Right, so he's right, not, right. they're not on the in crowd with him. And by the way, I'm not only saying, oh, racism is bad when like this redneck, like Pennsylvania character, like Shane Gillis rips on it. It always bothered me and Wild and Out, which is a black show run by Nick Cannon, where every time on the Wild style, any Asian rapper would go up there and have to take the craziest racial Asian stereotypes, but they could never fire back with racial stereotypes. I thought it was unfair, but it is the situation. The situation is unfair. Life, the life is unfair. Uh, point number four, not all Asians are going to categorize Shane Gillis as a racist redneck comedian. So it's really interesting because from, from what I know about Shane Gillis, he isn't, but he's very good at towing the line and that's part of his popularity. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's just like, I don't know, man. It's so interesting because people are like, dude, it's just comedy. Like he didn't like attack anybody. Look at what Mark Wahlberg did where he actually like, you know, there's some debate. He actually like blinded a Vietnamese man in his left eye mm -hmm. where it's just like, how do we rank anything in terms of realms of severity? Mm -hmm. Or do you, can you always go, well, he didn't really hurt anybody. He just made a dumb joke on a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's true that obviously actual street violence is in a completely different category that's way more severe, but it doesn't negate this either. And then, of course, point number five, Andrew, how come it seems like some people only know how to fight against their childhood archetypes and Shane Gillis represents a lot of childhood bullying archetypes in America, but they're not necessarily focusing, like, it's not like Aoki, and I'm not blaming him at all, but I'm just saying he's not focusing on, like, street violence. Right, right, yeah, I mean... I think this is uh, the group that he represents uh, is a media group. And this is, you know, I I think that it's that because Shane, I guess, kind of represents this guy who's like, he seems super Republican, even though he may and may not be. I'm not saying that I know his like personal, like political stance, but it essentially seems very vague, right? he has a lot of right-wing fans he has a lot of republican fans and so then those people feel extra strong about shane and they ride for shane and they're like nah he, dude he's just like the top community and he's saving comedy so it's kind of like it's almost like he's seen as a hero for doing it and that's the weirdest thing is that shane is seen as a hero for saying a slur and then bouncing back from it i guess people kind of like that story in america where somebody commits a crime, gets arrested for it, and then comes back out of jail and gets and is better. It's, like, they like that better than someone who never said it at all. Yeah, he did say in an interview that some people come up to him and go, dude, I'm such a big fan of you, Shane. And then they say the C word, and then he has to go, nah, 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 dude, do not come up to me and say that. Um, it kind of reminds me of, like, Boston, the Boston Celtics, where it's like, I don't really hate Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. I actually even like Porzingis, but I just... I'm rooting against the Celtics because uh -huh. of the fan base. And um, of course, Andrew, here's the just the last point. Point number six, Asians are doing too well for people to feel bad. It's a gift and a curse. Talk about this point. I, I think this is the, I think it's a pretty big point because I think the way people view Asians and, you know, there are some stats to back it up. Obviously, Asians as a whole do well. Not every Asian does. We know that a lot of Asians who don't. But as far as, I guess, East Asians and Chinese people, they, even though there's a lot of poor Chinese people, which he referred to in Chinatown, which is he's basically referring to lower middle class Chinese people working in Chinatown. But uh, too many people do well. Too many Asians are doing well for people to feel bad for Asians, you know? But is that is that why you feel anybody doesn't, uh, I guess, polices their own language against minorities? Is it literally based on yeah. macro, like, sort of stats? Yeah, that? I think because they, they're they they're just like, whoa, what do these words do to you guys? You guys are, like, get it, making more money on average, and they don't understand how hard we're working and how much we actually have to score higher on a test to get the same things and all that other stuff. So those are the nuances behind all those stats. But, yes, the numbers are there that the Asian-American and particularly, like, East Asian income is higher than whites. Right. You know what I mean? So now you got this blue collar white guy or who represents blue collar white guys, even though he went to West Point, Shane Gillis, he actually went to a good college, but it's like now they're using him as a champion 
as kind of the measuring stick and be like, oh, well, Asians are doing better. So Shane's like punching. It's not a big deal, guys. It's a little bit like the Larry the Cable Guy thing where like Larry the Cable Guy wasn't part of that constituency that he was representing or just, but that was clearly his fan base. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's just get into some real quick comments. These are all comments from uh, essentially white people, I believe, on the television Reddit. Somebody just said, uh, good Lord, get a life. A lot of people, were, of course, were saying like Asians are just like, uh, quit whining, quit whining. But then one guy said, listen, guys, if Asians are feeling like they're owed an apology, they're entitled to demand one just like Shane Gillis was entitled to say whatever he wanted. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's how free speech works, guys. I mean, so I would never be mad at this Aoki guy either. Somebody said, how to write a funny joke according to a white male comedian. Number one, visualize a marginalized group. Number two, say the cruelest and the most outrageous thing about them that comes to mind. Make sure it's something that you actually believe. Point number three, laugh. Mm. And then somebody said, imagine you're actually oppressed as an Asian American. That sort of addresses your point number six about people think we're too in, doing too good to care about a few little schoolyard jokes, right? Right. And then, of course, uh, we got to get to some Asian comments, Andrew. Uh, Asians are the next best target for lazy comedians. They're perfect for these assholes. Little political power. Most Americans couldn't give an ish about Asians, so why would they care? Mm. I'll say this, man. Uh, I think that Asians, Andrew, are treated like a valedictorian at a school that doesn't care about academics. So people, like, for example, we went to a high school where kid, people did not care about school. Like, people did not look at the valedictorian and, like, care about them at all, right? I think that it's almost like we, that, that you know the smartest kid in school is Asian, but they, if you mostly are only valuing that mean girl's, like, social ladder hierarchy, you just don't care about them. Right, right. I feel I like that is the position of Asians in larger society. Yeah, I mean, the, st the stat shows that, uh, more than one fourth of Americans have no connection with any Asian American in their life, not even like a coworker. Right. Somebody said it's about the attempt at accuracy. For example, nobody ever got mad at Russell Peters because Russell Peters looked like he hung out with that group, studied them, and did the accent super accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And you know, a lot of people are like, "Well, Dave Chappelle, he does a bad Asian accent right now. What? You don't go? You go against Shane Gillis, but not Dave Chappelle?" I think, to be honest, Andrew, Dave Chappelle's the goat but he's falling off lately too. Mm. And that's just like the same with MJ at the end of his career, the Wizards run, Kobe at the end of his last couple years with the Lakers. It's okay to say that the GOATs can still fall off towards the tail end of their careers. Mm -hmm. um, somebody was saying Gary Owen, he gets away with a lot of black jokes because he's married to a black woman and you could tell he spends a lot of time with the black community. Right. And um, it does seem like, Andrew, Shane has shifted his Overton window after being way too liberal with it to include the C word. Now he pretty much never talks about Asians. Right. I think he's just staying away from Asian jokes. Yeah. So, um, But oh. also, I, I don't think he really has any insight on Asians. Like, I don't think he really has much to say. He doesn't have Asian friends. He doesn't hang out in the Asian areas. You know, the only time he ever really made Asian jokes it turned out really bad for him and uh, he used the slur. So I think if I was him, I would stay away from Asian jokes too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say some real contrition from him would look like if he would have went into the Asian community and learned something, but you know, that's just like too much to ask. I think it maybe he's returned to neutral or something. You know what? It would have been nice. Andrew, if he would have took a trip to Asia, like Jim Gaffigan, Jim Gaffigan has actually some funny Asian Jim jokes. Jim Gaffigan has a whole special about his trip to China. Right. Ultimately, I'll say this, man. I'm not saying I'm fired up about this the way Aoki is, but it goes to show you that if you complain about something, you can shift people's like Overton window. And it's crazy that in America, an Overton window here is like, it's viewed as unacceptable for other groups, but Asians are pretty much like fair game for everybody. Mm. And especially like white people, because I think white people feel like that's the one group that they can dump on, to be honest, in, in jokes. I'm not saying, you know, Whatever, whatever. We, we, we just keeping it within the joke realm right now. Right. Yeah. So ultimately, Andrew, what do you think? I mean, uh, this is just popping up on the internet again. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't think Netflix is going to take down his series. I don't think uh, Netflix is going to do anything. I don't think Shane Gillis is going to budge. I think the amount of Asians that are fired up and ready to march about this is not that big. I do think a lot of Asians don't like it. And I think that a lot of Asian people, if you ask them and quiz them, like be like, no, it wasn't right for him to say that. But um, if I had to say, I don't think the community is going to get behind this one. Right. I mean, ultimately, 
More power to them, though. I want more Asians to stand up and just do things, whether they do things exactly the way I would do them or they feel exactly triangulated with how I feel. Go for it. Be more proactive. Inspire somebody else to be proactive. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace.